Hi guys, welcome to Talk To Me Tuesday for Tuesday, March 11th, 2014. This is Jennifer. We're going to do something a little different today. Instead of show and tell, I have a quick tutorial to share. Um, I have uh, talked before in my Talk To Me Tuesdays and my blog and other places about how I machine stitch my binding when I'm making quilts for kids or charity quilts. And I have, a couple of people have asked me how I do it, and I have scoured the internet looking for one tutorial that has all of the things that I do, and I found all of the individual things that I do in different people's tutorials, but I couldn't find one comprehensive tutorial that had all of the different things that I have learned over the years from making, primarily making charity quilts. These are all tricks that I have learned from my friends that volunteer for the Linus Connection. Um, I've made a lot of quilts for them over the years, and when we all get together to sew together, this is how we bind our quilts. Primarily, we're going to focus on um, attaching the binding, sewing the corners, sewing the ends of the binding together, and then sewing the uh, machine stitching the binding to the front of the quilt. First thing you're going to want to do is have your quilt ready to go. Um, it's already been quilted. I've already trimmed all the edges, so all the excess fabric is now gone and then you're going to measure your quilt. My quilt is 44 by 53. Uh, add all of the four sides together, so it'd be 44, 44, 53, 53, and then I like to add 12 inches, and then you're going to divide that by the width of whatever fabric you're making your binding out of. So you add your four sides plus 12 divided by, say, 40 inches, and that'll give you the number of strips that you need to make your binding. My quilt is 44 by 53, and so I put that in, I calculate, and it tells me that I need five strips of fabric. So those are already cut. Um, I am doing two and a half inch strips. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our strips, which I have already cut my strips. Mine are two and a half inches. This is my preferred width. Some people do two and a quarter. You do what you like. Two and a half works great for me. This is how I learned to do it, and this is how I still do it. I'm going to use a standard sewing machine foot. I have drawn lines on my machine to extend the center and the two quarter inch lines. So I'm going to follow the center line. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this binding strip and I'm going to overlap it with this one. I just want to make sure they're overlapped slightly. And then I'm going to follow from this point to this point. If you are unsure about using a line or you just want to make sure that you're doing it right, then you can actually draw a pencil line right here. I don't normally do this, but you can. You just draw a pencil line and that gives you something to follow. As long as these are even, you're going to end up with a perfect mitered corner. So I'm going to follow here. And then see my middle line? I like to follow that middle line. And then that's going to make a perfect mitered seam. I'm going to repeat this on all the other seams and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim this off to a quarter inch. I now have one continuous strip of binding and notice that I did not press this in half. I don't press my binding in half because I like to have a smoother edge when I fold it back over and I find that if you press it sometimes that that line is not exactly in the center and you have to repress your binding so I just prefer to leave it open. This is a trick I learned from a friend. I can't take credit for this, but um, I leave it open. I don't press it. The only parts that I press open are the seam allowances. I've now changed to a quarter inch foot. This is optional. If you have a walking foot, you can use a walking foot. You can use any standard foot with a quarter inch marking. I happen to have a quarter inch foot and I have dual feed. So I'm going to turn my dual feed on and that will help pull all the bulk of the quilt through the machine. So I'm going to start with the back of the quilt. This is one of the things about this technique that's different. You don't sew to the front, you sew to the back. And so we're going to take, and we're going to leave about a 12, in, 12 inch tail. So I'm going to line this up to the edge of my quilt. And if you want to, you can pin here. You don't have to, but you can. You can start with a pin just so you know um, that that is the unstitched edge. I'm just going to go a little bit past the pin. I'm going to go ahead and sit down my foot, and because this isn't pressed, I just fold it in half as I go. We just want to make sure it lines up with the edge of the quilt, and we're just going to sew. So I'm going to 
to keep sewing until I get to a quarter of an inch from the end of the corner. Now I actually have a quarter inch line here. You can see it right here as well. So that's how I know where to stop. I'm going to leave my needle down, turn my quilt, sorry about the little bump there, I'm going to raise my needle, pull it out just a little bit, we're going to fold up, and I'm going to fold down, and if you need to adjust it, just adjust it. You want a 45 degree angle there, we're going to make this, there we go, just like that, so that your corner is nice and folded. Now we're going to do the opposite here where we're going to start a quarter of an inch in. Um, if you have a dual feed you might have to raise it here. Mine occasionally will grab on right there. So we're starting a quarter of an inch in. It's really important that you not stitch all the way to the edge because if you do it'll be impossible to turn your corner when you get to the other side. And then we're just going to sew to the other corner. I'm going to do the same thing on the corner again. I'm going to show you guys one more time just because corners are what uh, tricks most people or trips them up, I should say. So I'm going to make sure I have that quarter inch. We're going to turn. We're going to raise our needle. I'm going to pull this guy out a little bit. Fold up, make sure you're nice and straight, fold down, get this corner all lined up, and then we're going to go right back in at a start at a quarter inch. All right, we've sewn all four corners. And now we have just this little bit left to do. And the next thing I'm going to show you is a little trick I learned from some of the ladies at the charity that I volunteer for. And this is a super cool trick and I hope that you will find it to be really useful. I'm going to take the loose end that I started with and I'm going to pin it down just so that it's nice and flat. I'm going to take this ruler and I'm going to put it right where it's two and a half inches. So so this is one inch, two inch, two and a half inches. I'm going to overlap this, and this part is going to be anathema to anyone that's been quilting for any length of time. You're going to not want to do this, but you can do it, and it'll be fine. So I overlap it, make sure it's nice and flat, and I'm actually going to use a pair of scissors. See, I bumped it, so I want to make sure it's in the right place. I'm going to use a pair of scissors, and I'm going to trim that off. Okay, so don't freak out yet. We're gonna, we don't need the ruler now. So now we have these two little ends like this. This is the easiest trick that I have ever learned for binding. So we take the two ends, take them together like this. You're just gonna turn them. And this time we're gonna make sure the ends meet perfectly. So I'm actually gonna pin this over here so that when I sew, my pin is not in the way. And when you stitch this, you're gonna stitch from this corner to this corner. And you can draw a line there if you want to. You might have to manipulate your quilt a little to get this to lie flat. So I will just twist it around until I get these two little ends where they lie flat. So we are gonna sew from this point to this point. So I'm gonna find this point under here Make sure it's right in the center. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put my needle down. I did leave my quarter inch foot on and I'll show you why in just a second. So I've made sure this is centered up. We're just gonna stitch all the way down. And can you see, I don't know if you'll be able to see or not, but my quarter inch foot left a little line right there and it basically just left a perfect quarter inch seam for me, so I'm just gonna trim along that little seam. And then I'm gonna finger press this. And then I don't even have to leave my machine to get up to iron, I'm just gonna press this with my fingers. So now, 
you're going to see that that fits perfectly. So we're going to flip this over, put it back in. I'm just going to overlap slightly where I stitched before. Can you see how that's nice and smooth? And that is exactly the right length of binding. So our binding is all sewn on. This is where we joined it. Now I'm going to change the foot on my machine. I'm going to put this foot back on. This is my standard foot. And we're going to flip this baby over and sew it from the front. So we're going to take the binding, we're going to pull it from the back, and see since I didn't crease it, it's going to crease on its own as I roll it to the front. And I like to make sure that it's nice and even. You want to make sure you're covering your stitching line. Um, because I use binding that matches the back of my fabric on the back of my quilt, I'm actually going to match the thread to that backing. You can use monofilament. You can match your front thread to your front and your back thread to your back. You can do it any way that you like. You can use a straight stitch here. You can use a decorative stitch. I like to use a straight stitch. I actually use a slightly longer stitch than I do when I'm stitching the binding on. Because at this point we're just securing it. It's already attached to the quilt. And then we're just going to sew. I like to stitch close to the edge. You can go fast, you can take your time, whatever is most comfortable. As I get closer to the corner, I'm going to make sure that it's nice and straight. Now because of the way you folded it before, going to help you make your point. So we're going to fold this part up and I like to fold this part down because you're, fold, you're sewing over the flap instead if you fold it this way then you're sewing into the flap and I don't care to do that. Some people trim their corners here. Um, I don't do that. It, it is personal. It's optional. If you want to trim your corner there you can trim your corner. So make your corner nice See how you have a nice point there? We're just going to sew right up to the point. I'm going to sew a couple stitches past and then I'm going to back stitch just a little bit and then I'm just going to turn that corner. In my machine when I back stitch, when I take my first stitch forward it's going to automatically back stitch so I will get one back stitch in that corner when I start. I'm going to slow down so I can show you one more corner. Remember we're going to fold up, you're going to fold down, and you can manipulate that with your finger just a little bit to get it to a nice point. I'm going to turn and we're going to keep sewing. So we're done. It's sewn on. You can uh, either tack your, your stitches and trim your thread or you can bury these if you prefer. So that's it. That's how I bind a quilt completely by machine. I hope that was helpful to some of you guys. And remember, as always, um, my quilt philosophy is, is just because it works for me doesn't mean it has to work for you. Um, I like to accumulate tips and ideas from the people that I meet and that I learn from and incorporate them in my own technique. So if you picked up just one new thing today, then that makes me happy. And I just want to... Um, comment on a couple of things. Um, this is a charity quilt. This is actually one of my uh, UFOs for 2014. So this this one is done now and I will be donating it to the Linus Connection on Saturday. Um, also the little trick where I showed you the ruler, 
You can also trim a piece of your um, binding itself off because it is the width that you want to trim when you overlap those two pieces. So if you don't have a ruler handy with you, say you take it sewing somewhere else or your ruler's across the room or whatever, you can snip a little bit off the end of your binding and use that two and a half inches or whatever width you use for your binding to, um, to trim that down. If you want to hand stitch your binding to the back, you can use this exact technique just sew your binding to the front of the quilt instead of the back and then when you pull it to the back you hand stitch with um, you can use a blind stitch or a whip stitch whatever you're more comfortable with don't forget the Talk To Me Tuesday Traveling Swap Box has been shipped it's on its way to its first destination so um, we'll be looking forward to seeing those videos hopefully not too long the first one the first three are international so they'll be a little bit more spread out in between there I wanted to let you guys know that I did mail the um, Fault in Our Stars that we all read and wrote in to John Green last week, so I don't know if we'll hear anything about it, but just know that it is actually, he should have it by now. Tomorrow is As You Wish, so there'll be two new pattern sets, so make sure you stop by Fandom and Stitches for that. And I actually have Quilt Retreat next week, but it won't be until Thursday, so I will be here on Tuesday for Talk To Me Tuesday, and I'll show you guys what I'm taking with me to work on. Um, and before I add anything else to this video, I think this is it. I will talk to you guys next week. Bye.